That's no reason to go walk in the streets with these bums. Who are you calling bums, pal? You. Really? Listen, we got we got two more of us in the back seat. Pity the back seat. If you're Stop looking it. for a fight, I am Hey everybody, it's Andy Katz here with the Mission Statements Delta Bravo uh, Urban Exploration Team podcast. I am coming to you from Kent Island in uh, in Maryland. It's dark out now, and it's about it's uh, seven o'clock at night. So I guess it's dark in a lot, a lot of places, but uh, I'm not used to this whole time change thing. Anyway, I am so excited about having another opportunity to uh, talk to um, a Delta Bravo urban exploration team member who has been on the podcast before with Jimmy. And uh, I've had a chance to meet this person a couple of times and in the flesh, he is sometimes called the MVP of the Delta Bravo urban exploration team. His name is Danny Johnson. And I'm really excited to welcome him back to the podcast because I wanted to talk to him, frankly, selfishly about some of the things that we did this summer and uh, some of the things that he's done since the summertime uh, that I really wanted to hear uh, hear him explain. So uh, welcome, welcome, Danny Johnson. What up, AK? It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, man. Can't wait to get into it. Yeah, I I, I wanted to, uh, I, I, in, in preparation for this, um, I started listening back to a couple of things. Uh, I get really excited to hear the stories and to see the mashups and to see the travel. And uh, just today, I don't know if, it, I think they took the picture today or yesterday, but you posted this beautiful uh, picture of yourself and your wife um, uh, with this incredible sunset behind you. I think it's in Oceanside, California. Do you remember posting that? Was that you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We were we go out there every night uh, to see the sunset. We live on the strand of the beach. And that was right outside our door last night, man. It was incredible. I think this time of year, we get the most colorful sunsets. So that's just the beginning. It was unbelievable. It, it was just, and the picture you took, I guess, of her, she has kind of a cool, like, hat on and, and and she's in mostly in silhouette it almost looks like she has little animal ears it's it's brilliant i just thought it was it was stunning uh and i it, it looks kind of uh almost like fake like uh cgi yeah. or something so so cool yeah so one of the place. things that i wanted to oh sorry go ahead oh no i was just gonna say that's my favorite that's my favorite place to spend time it's my favorite time of day and uh, it's just, it's amazing to be out there. It puts the whole world into perspective for you. Well, you know, one of the, I'm a little envious, and I can't imagine I'm the only one who's a little envious of your, you're everywhere. It seems like you, you, you've you been able to travel. I know it, I think it has something to do with your job. Um, the last I heard you were in Salem, Massachusetts. And uh, then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you popped back up in Los Angeles. And then uh, I think you're in Ocean inside california now and uh i just i think it's you have this knack of finding places and and beautiful things and um even if even if you're in a small town or if you're, if you're in a town like salem which is uh has a really deep history with all of the the witch stuff um it's it's kind of amazing what you do whenever you arrive at a place so i'm a big fan of yours man i just think you do it right and i think it seems like you have a lot of fun with it and you get a lot of joy out of exploring. Yeah, you know, I love my job. Um, it's surgical science. I provide instruments for surgery at, at different hospitals. I can work anywhere I want. It takes me from coast to coast. So we tend to, you know, go where the weather's nice. And, uh, you know, our hobby is is your hobby. It's urban exploration. Uh, we have our team, um, which I'm proud to be on. And uh, you, you just you never know what you're going to get wherever you are. A, lo a lot of times you just got to open up your eyes and you'll discover things that are incredible. Um, 
you know, I love this hobby because I love doing the research. I love the road trips. And then I, I love the experience of finding a location and being there and then getting a really cool picture out of it. So it's the whole shebang um, that's become just integrated in our life and our adventures. And uh, it's it's really fulfilling. I think people should explore more and see what's out there. Yeah, no doubt. I totally agree. Um, now, some people might wonder, like, why I'm I'm on the mic again and, and why you're back for another visit. I, I actually love that we have multiple visits together. And uh, but but one of the main things I wanted to talk about was uh, we had a really incredible experience this summer. Uh, I don't want to go into it too deep on my end. I would love to hear your your perspectives on it. But I had a chance to go out to Los Angeles for the first time in my life. And uh, I was going to go uh, with Rayanne Belshare, who's a part of the Nerd Locations community. He's also part of Delta Bravo now. And he very uh, generously asked me to go out there after we had this amazing trip to Tulsa. We went to Tulsa and we did the, the Outsiders House Museum. And we uh, we had a great experience with Danny Boy out in Tulsa and really he should just run for mayor of that town because he would win <laughs> and uh, uh, now I love Tulsa too and I had never even con considered going there but when I was there Rayan asked me to go to LA and he said you've never been to LA and you do Delta Bravo like even Danny was like you've never been to LA and uh, so I made it a priority and little did I know that I would get there by the end of the summer I hadn't planned on going and all of a sudden that all of the pieces came in into view and I was able to book a trip and then the other pieces started coming together uh Nick Light came down from Vancouver Mike Kearney from MCA Day uh stowed away in his words and he ended up coming out with us as well and then you and Michelle uh drove up from Oceanside and met us and we rendezvoused in Venice and I remember it like it was yesterday it wasn't that long ago but just um, we all went to that coffee shop, took us way too long to get what we ordered. And I just was chomping at the bit to go out to the the, the boardwalk or the, the concrete walk there and start finding spots. I had, you know, this was m mythology to me to be out there. But to be out there with you and Michelle and Nick and Mike and and and, uh, and Rand was just unbelievable because I was lucky. I was the beneficiary of all of your knowledge you had already been there you had already hit a lot of these spots of so often i find myself walking in your footsteps uh when, i know i've told the story about when i was in chicago and i had to go hit the john dillinger spot because you had you had done that in that alleyway in chicago but what do you, what do you uh what were your perspectives on when we all met up in venice because I, I i i can remember spots we hit almost immediately but I would love to hear from you about that. Well, that was an incredible experience. Um, it would, turned into so much more than what I thought it was going to be. Uh, shout out to Rayen for bringing us all together and uh, to everybody involved. I think Venice was the perfect place to rendezvous because it's just rich with L.A. life. There's so much to see and do. And if you recall uh, the first few hours in Venice, we were able to to stumble upon five or six different cool locations all within a half a mile. Uh, I know mm -hmm. we found um, Thor's location. Uh, we got to tour Muscle Beach with the German from Venice. Uh, that new uh, Barbie movie was filmed in that vicinity. Um, there was just so much going on uh, that it was just it, this, this rush of excitement all at once to, even though I'd, I'd already been there, to be there with you guys because the adventure wouldn't have been what it was if it was with different people. Um, so I thought it was a great start and, uh, it was a great introduction to just break the ice with everybody, come up with a plan because it all just, the, the early, early morning of the first day was a discombobulation to me. I wasn't really sure where everybody was going, how it was going to play out, who was involved. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think great icebreaker and bonding experience for, for all of us. And uh, that led to us going up the coast towards Malibu into uh, Santa Monica, where we ended up at the Bluffs. Yeah, well, man, that for me, that was, you know, that was my bucket list. That was one of, you know, I had a bunch of bucket list spots 
in LA, all having to do with the Beastie Boys. So after we did uh, Venice and we did White Men Can't Jump and we we did the I, the Doors one, I love because it was all of us in the picture and everybody had their place. I thought that was great. And we're starting to put slaps up and I'm like, whoa, this is it. Like, this, it's happening. We're like walking around with, with a purpose and we knew where we were going to go. We had all these places to go. And I couldn't get to Santa Monica fast enough. I was being probably kind of rude about it. I was like, oh, like, I, let's go. Let's get back in the car. I want to go up this, up the road to this place that I've always wanted to go. And the bluffs, as you call it, um, basically it's this strange concrete um uh, uh, structure off the side of Pacific Coast Highway across the street from a big paved parking lot. I think somebody, I think Ryan told me the building we parked next to is where they filmed um, the Saved by the Bell when they worked in the, the summertime. They, they worked at the beach resort. And I was like, this is crazy. It's, it's all right there, you know. Um, but we walked across the street and uh, you want to take it from there because I, I, uh, I just I'll go I'll go off I talk about that. It's pretty cool because it was like a playground for us and everything just seemed natural. Like when we found that door spot and uh, we, we all decided to get in the picture, it just fell into place naturally. Like everybody just seemed to know where they go. Ernie took one look at the photo and said, that's me. You know what I mean? It all just fell into place. And then the same same goes for the bluffs. Now, I, I've been to the bluffs a few times. The first time I went there, I couldn't find it. And that's a drag because the traffic gets real heavy around that that area. Um, the second time I found it, it was blocked off with police tape. There was a crime scene um, oh, wow. investigation at that location. So I made it to the parking lot and then bailed. Uh, the third time I found it, and it, it just blew my mind that I made it there. And then that I got to experience what was there, which we'll get into. Um, but after I'd left, uh, the police caught up with me a few miles down the road asking what I was doing there. Like, oh, wow. um, so then be there with you guys, it was like, wow, this has just finally happened the way I always envisioned it. Um, you had Glenn's book with you with the photos that we were recreating and everything just fell into place. Um, I was living vicariously through your excitement. I remember when you were standing up where Yalk was sitting and you got a call from your, from your wife and, and you were just like, I can't believe I'm here. I mean, the way that, that you were talking, the way that you were feeling, just it, it, it came into me and it just ignited this fire um, uh, of enhancement, of the ex excitement that I was already feeling from being there. And I think everybody felt pretty much the same way. Yeah, man. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm getting kind of emotional now hearing you say that because that's right. I hopped up on that ledge and I'm I'm not that sprightly. So it was it was an effort to balance and to crouch down the way he was. I'm not I'm not as flexible as I used to be. And uh, right as I got up there, my wife called, like you said, and I stood up and I'm looking out at the Pacific Ocean. And I'm like, you wouldn't believe what I'm looking at right now. And, you know, she knew that it was a big deal for me to get out there. And it's such a random place, right? Like it, people, thousands of people drive by this. They're in traffic. They couldn't care less about this. It's an old structure. It's falling apart. It's it's eroding. There's It's back in the weeds. It looks like there's campfires that have happened and there's broken bottles and things and i'm getting emotional because i'm like this is where i wanted to go this one dot on a map in california and i'm here and so and it was just the, one of the first spots we hit we had a couple days ahead of us and yeah i got emotional and and um you know we we started using glenn's together forever book and striking poses and uh i i've still work i'm still sorting through those photographs and still doing mashes from that because we got some alternative shots that I hadn't seen except for in that book. And uh, they they just came out so great. And so when I'm mashing them months later, I I, I feel this 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 exhilaration kind of well up. I'm like, wow, we did it. Like we nailed it. We were there. And, you know, we were there together. And I know that that's um, it, I, I had planned on going with one other person or by myself. And to be there with Mike and you and Ran and and uh, and Nick and Michelle, it was it was really powerful for me. I, I know I'm I'm a cornball and I can overstate things, but it was um it's why we do what we do. I think like it's 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 running down history. It's it's being it's kind of feeling closer to things that have felt far away for a little while, especially with Yout passing away. 
over 10 years ago now, it, it, it feels like we're as close as we're going to be. And uh, I just, I just loved it. So I'm so glad you were there. And I'm so glad you felt similarly to me. I did, man, because I mean, I grew up with the Beastie Boys. I was first introduced to them uh, when they opened up for Madonna. And then I saw them on the license to Ill Tour. Uh, I saw uh, Check Your Head uh, in, in New York City at the Roseland. I saw Ill Communication uh, Tour. I saw Hello Nasty Tour. I saw Field Day Fest, the Bet and Freedom Fest. They've always been a part of my life, but they weren't just always good music to me. They were a good lifestyle. I kind of grew up and changed with them throughout time. So whatever album was out, whatever was going on at the time was my favorite album. Um, so to this day right now, my favorite album is Hot Hot Sauce Committee Part 2. Um, when Check Your Head came out, that was my favorite album at that time. So I kind of just, they've always been a staple in my life. So to revisit these locations is, is just capturing a moment in time for me that really takes me back to where I was at a certain place in time while what was going on with them was happening to me. Um, so, yeah, that was just the beginning of our adventures. And the, the photos that we captured out of there are incredible, man. It seems like, again, it just seems like there was this naturality to it, even though it was a little chaotic at times because we were all excited. Um, it seems like we were hanging the way that they were hanging. Um, and it, mm -hmm. like, again, it felt like that if I was with other people. So that was the beginning of um, our trip, which focused, which turned in the focus turned into the Beastie Boys. Um, and it just gets better from there. <laughs> like, it does, I, I it's right? <laughs> better than this. It doesn't get better than this. This is incredible. I'm on top of the world standing here with, you know, Andy Katz and Mike Kern Kearney, who I, I now... Um, consider one of my best friends and Rayan and and Nick and Michelle and Freddie I mean it was just Freddie wasn't there that day right he came the next day but it was yet. still that's right. That's right. It was incredible. I can't describe um fully how I feel and how I still feel through flashbacks I'm the same man I I, I totally agree and uh and I feel the same way about uh Beastie Boys music and their history and uh and their ethos um there's been a couple of people here and there in the Delta Bravo crew or 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 just outside of it who it can be a little bit more, you know, you don't have to hit every Beastie Boys spot. You know, there's other things. And we did like we we killed it. Like we did a lot of other stuff before I even went before I, sure. I, I met up with you guys. We hit the high school from Greece. We, we did a uh, uh, ride up. Hi, Venice High School. And, uh, you know, and the, it, the, it was an interesting ebb and a flow from this trip because um, you and, uh, and Michelle did your own thing uh, in the evenings, right? And then Ryan and I would go, we would hit spots. We would get up really early the next morning and go hit spots. And then we'd meet up. So you're right. It became a Beastie Boys focus. And we did a lot of Beastie Boys stuff. But you know, we hit a lot of other things, too. And uh, and and so, but you're right. It was funny when you said, you know, how can it get better than this? And then it got better than this twice. It kept, yeah. it like kept getting <laughs> better. And uh, and so the next, uh, I, I I think I, I need to write it down, like the chronology of what happened, because I I don't want to omit anything. But if we're staying on the Beastie Boys part, and really what I I want to eventually get up to is sort of how you you ended up sort of writing wrong. We. We uh, and I'll get to that yeah. later. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. But you you sort of sewed up something that we left behind, and I and I really want to mm -hmm. get to that eventually. But the so the next so I guess after after Santa Monica, um, did we split up? Um, and then yeah, yeah. So we, we did met. Um, we met. Go ahead. So when I'm in LA, I stay in Silver on uh, Glendale Boulevard, which is 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 usual for me, but. At this time now, that's in my head. Okay, you know, Glendale Boulevard, it's where I'm at. It's where I live. Check it out, right? So now I'm seeing Nettie's restaurant. I'm seeing the dog park where Mike D hung out every day with his dog. And I, I, like I said, I, this is it's a weekly occurrence. I'll drive by these places, but now it's all in the forefront of my mind, you know, where the Atwater Village sign was. Um, that's my stomping ground when I'm in L.A. So that's where uh, that's where we went in the evenings and then the next day you guys went out you guys did a bunch of stuff i think one of the things that you guys may have done was the check your head album cover on franklin um we did. and then right. mm -hmm. at, uh g sun studio 
We did. Um, that was crazy. That was crazy, I've to, right? I've been to Jesus on many times. Um, the first time I couldn't get in. Uh, the second time I cut through the store and asked them to let me in, and they did. Uh, the third time uh, I got in and I got up on the roof, and then the and and it was all great. But being there with you guys changed everything. This was a totally next level experience. Yeah, well, I. I... I got to hand that to Nick Light. I mean, I I knew I was going to be there with you and Ran and Mike, and I knew that you guys are fence jumpers and you're going to do whatever it takes to get in there. And I kind of imagined myself uh, doing the same. I, I, I guess I always thought, I just want the back gate to be open, or I just want to be able to take a picture from the back gate looking at the stairs. That was my thing. I was just like, I just, I'm, I got my fingers crossed. I had seen you do it uh, years before um, and you had gotten what, what I wanted to get, which was just a shot of the back steps where they filmed the past the mic video. To me, that was their apex. That That's just my favorite moment in Beastie history is, is check your head, ill communication era. That was where they hung out. That's where they recorded. So all I wanted to do is be able to walk up to the back gate and take pictures uh, without bothering anybody. And if I had to, maybe climb a fence and get into that little back courtyard. But Nick Light called me the, before we even flew out there. And he's like, on Monday at three o'clock, we have an appointment at Cheese Sun. They know we're coming and they're excited about it. And I was like, oh my God. Wow. So we had that in the back of my head, like all day on Sunday. I was like, oh my gosh, we have a we have an appointment at G-Sun. They know we're coming. And uh, and man, so we went to we went to like a little taco place around the corner right before we got there. We wolfed down a whole bunch of food. And um, did we meet you right out front? I, I feel like we did. Yep, we met you right out front. And uh, we had all access for as long as we wanted. I mean, it was incredible. I couldn't believe it. I mean, we just walked right in there and and saw what they saw. We walked in there in the Beastie Boys' footsteps. We did, and I I'll never forget that the there was a woman there that 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 greeted us, and I thought she was going to put some limitations on us because we had the appointment, but I didn't know how long the appointment would be for. Right? I thought, all right, you got ten minutes to check out this space, and she mm -hmm. gathered us kind of at the landing at the top of the stairs, and we're all just. We're already taking pictures and posing with the logo sign and and just just taking it all in overwhelmed and this woman was so so nice her name was sarah and she gathered us together and she said look everybody i i, I wanted to let you know that you know we're really happy that you're here and that um you know we really take the rebellious spirit of the beastie boys seriously and we want to honor them with how we keep this space open to people like yourself i was like what's going on and then she said i have to leave but stay as long as you like and close the door and lock up when you leave i was like what what <laughs> and like you said not only do we have all access we had an open invitation an open-ended invitation to stay as long as we liked and we did right we were there for um i feel like that's when you and Mike really started bonding. We were we were we were trading uh, merch from from Delta Bravo and MCA Day, and uh, um, we were playing basketball on on the indoor court. Mike asked about the basketball. We were posing for pictures, like pretending to dunk the ball, and it was just we were just able to take it all in. How do you, how do you remember that? That's exactly how it was when I heard, hey, this might be, I think this is Ad Rock's basketball. Shoot some hoops. <laughs> and then Mike was dunking. Oh, man. I just, I, I, it was so exciting, um, you know, trying to recreate the photos of him dunking, um, seeing the state where the stage was set up and where the ramp was set up and the parquet floor and hearing the stories from Sarah about the history of the building and what's left and what's been preserved seeing the walls and the graffiti underneath the you know the walls being preserved it was like stepping into a time capsule it was like being somewhere i never thought i'd be and it was like living a dream come true i mean we just took advantage of that time and made the most of it and it was like everywhere i looked somebody had a smile from ear to ear like a little kid on christmas day standing right. outside 
oh, where where they're 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 playing Boggle or whatever or 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 whatever, and you know, doing the Pass the Mic video and getting on the roof with you guys, and then you know, having the Together Forever book down and seeing pictures I'd never seen before and recreating photo, photos with you out back. Everything about it was just like giddy and exciting and it, it was like holy shit i didn't think it was going to get better than yesterday but it did this is <laughs> this is incredible i can't believe i'm experiencing this right now yeah and uh if i'm not mistaken you actually got somewhere where none of us none of us did um there was a front office I, there was an occupant and that that was using the space that wasn't related to the the studio or the soundboard room there was a a room in the front office and somehow tell tell what happened there because i i was running around yeah. doing something else but you got you got in there i think right well studio booth was and i knew that uh the door was closed and sarah had said on the way out this is the only place you guys don't have access to um but it wouldn't hurt to knock so i didn't knock i just walked in and i walked in and it was a hall with uh three offices on my left and at the end of the hall was the recording studio. And I walked out of the, to the end of the recording studio and I said, hello. And a couple guys came out. I told them what I was doing. And uh, they were a little on the fence about me being back there. They said, well, you got to talk to Sarah about being here. And, and I said, well, she said that I got to talk to you. And they said, okay, you know, we're busy in here making music, but take some pictures. So I did. Uh, I said, well, which office was the Beastie Boys? Because I know there was three rooms one of them was occupied by them. According to the Beastie Boys story, two of the other rooms were, were occupied by other people. And they said, well, it was this one closest to the studio. So I got a couple shots. They moved, moved some stuff out of the way for me. That, that was exciting. I mean, when I, when I walked out of there, I just felt like, holy shit, I can't believe I just went in there. That was incredible. You know, I didn't get, get incredible pictures, but I got to be there. I got to yeah. see, you know, I got to experience that. Um, and again, that was just, you know, one of the one of the many levels of that whole whole day there at G-Sun. It was yeah, incredible. That's, man. Yeah, it, that's I right. I'm, I'm so glad, you know, I, I, I want to take I almost feel like taking notes when you're around like, all right, what did he do? How did he how did he talk his way in there? And I I'm pretty polite and I I can talk my way into some places. But if someone says no, I don't usually push it. But I think that you guys have a finesse about you where um, whether it's you or jimmy or 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 uh or anybody really um uh, you don't have to necessarily flash a badge but you you can get in and you can uh i think being polite goes a long way but i thought also think being persistent and and polite goes an even longer way and, and i'm just i was i was so happy that you got in there uh, and then of course we spent another couple of hours playing on the back steps taking pictures on the roof like you said you uh, were such a great sport taking video of Mike, um, basically <laughs> reenacting the past the mic video, and he's like, "Do it again, do it again." Like he wanted, he wanted to get all his lip syncing right, and he wanted me to throw him the oh. basketball. It was, it was brilliant. It was like we were little kids, um, and yeah. just someone just gave us the keys to the playground. It was unreal, and it's That's really hard to put into words. Absolutely. And I got to tell you, man, I, like I was so high on life that day. I didn't think it could ever get better than that. And then it got better than that. And then it did. <laughs> That's right. So the next, I guess well, it was the next day, right? The yes. next day, um, we we got, we, we started out. Um, I, I'm trying to think we were driving around and uh, we hadn't met up with you yet. Did we meet you at Griffith Observatory? Yeah. Or where did we, we met at Griffith Tour? And uh, yeah. it was really tricky because it was a super busy day. I love Griffith Park. I love um, the views from the mountain of LA up there. They're just, they're breathtaking. Um, but there is um, a, a parking area that's close to the observatory and it was full and they weren't letting anybody in. So the only other option, you know, is to park down one of the sides of, of the mountain and climb up, which is quite a hike. So yeah. we circled around times. And uh, they just were not letting people in there. Um, it was hot finally, too. Mike, it was hot. Yeah, and I know you guys were were there too. We were we were just each looking for our own way to get in there or whatever. And then mm -hmm. Mike had the bright idea. He said, "Hey, flash your Delta Bravo badge." I said, "All right, I'm going to show him the badge. I doubt this is going to work. Um, these guys really don't want to let us in here. Um, and if if it doesn't work, we're just going to park and we're going to have to hike." Right. 
And it worked, man. I showed him the I the the Delta Bravo the the press badge. Um, thank you, Jimmy Ferrari. And right. uh, and the security guy walkie talkie to somebody, something about yeah, Delta Bravo. They're here to film. Over. Then we're holding up traffic, waiting for somebody to get back to him. And then somebody got back to him and said, "Let him in." Yeah. I was like, "Oh, what?" And so meanwhile, really I, cool. I think I think Mike uh, took Freddie's camera which was a really substantial camera yeah. and sort of showed it like, look, we have this really like incredible camera and we, we must be for real. We must be pressed. And so um, I guess someone in yeah. your car had texted someone in our car because we got to the same checkpoint. I flashed my badge and they recognized it because they had just talked yeah. to you and they waved us in. I was like, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> You know, it was it was a, like a small victory, but it felt so good. It was like this is oh my god, this is how it should happen. It, yeah, it was. So it was. Great to have... <laughs> it was. And Thank you, Jimmy Ferrari, it. like you said, that was all Jimmy. Jim, I wish Jimmy had been there with us. He would love that we actually used that to our advantage. So we were at Griffith for yeah. a little while. We took some pictures of uh of Ricky Powell uh, shots and uh. I guess um, the yeah. at beginning of the sabotage video when the word comes down over mm -hmm. the city, um, and uh, that was that was a lot of fun, and, and it was getting really hot, and we were sort of like, well, what are we going to do next? And I remember distinctly that you and uh, Mike sort of piped up and were like, let's let's go to the G spot, let's go to Grasshoff's house, and I had it on my map, and I I was a little sort of sheepish about it. I was like, I don't know, like I don't think we're going to be able to get in there. And uh, we had other things to do maybe back in Hollywood, but um, you guys sort of persisted. You're like, no, let's try. Like, sh shit, I'll go up to the door. I'll, 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 I'll climb the fence or I'll, you know, I'll, I'll talk a good game. And I was like, yeah, you know, we're here. Let's go. So we sort of made a, just a group decision on, on the fly and we drove, I guess it's up Mulholland Drive. And um, we went way back there and, and it's, it's at a cul-de-sac. It's at the top of a cul-de-sac. And um, I was I was really skeptical. I'm like, yeah, it'll be cool to see the house, but I don't think we're getting in. And uh, do you want to take you want to tell the tell the story of what happened? Yeah. Trying to um, decide what we were going to do next at Griffith Observatory. And I really just wanted to go to Loyola. I've never been there. And um, mm. those photos that were taken there, the Beastie Boys are are iconic. And I knew that was a sure shot. Um, I'd been to the Grasshoff's house twice before. Um, when the previous owner occupied it and uh, there was no getting in um, there. It looked a little bit different. I remember there were lions on the gate, the same lions that are in oh, the right. ladies video. Um, it was really cool. And both times I actually flew up my drone to see what was going on on the property. And there were tons of people around the pool enjoying their day. Um, you know, if a stranger knocks on a, a house in the Hollywood Hills, they're not going to get a response. If they are, they're not going to get in or on the property. So I bailed both times. Um, so when the idea came up to go there, I I just kind of knew we weren't going to get in. But I thought to myself, if, the, if there's a sliver of a chance of getting in there, I'd rather do that than Loyola. So that's how I, I you know, that's how my vote got into the into the mix on what we should do next and one thing led to another we ended up going up there which was really odd because there was what six or seven of us mm -hmm. just strangers you know walking up to this mansion in the hollywood hills wanting to go swimming in your pool right imagine <laughs> what that's like I, the chances that, of that happening are, are very unlikely but um i do know that uh mike tried to ring the doorbell and we realized it was disconnected and and the door was just kind of you know, open. It wasn't like locked, closed. And um, he hollered at somebody over there and and, and we were yelling, hey, can we want to check out the pool? We want to check out the pool. And uh, from what I understood was that there were construction workers there working on the property and they didn't speak English. So they just waved right. us in. They just waved us in. <laughs> That's right. They just waved us in. Like, come on, come on. So uh, I remember walking up. I said, hey, we want to check out the pool. And the guy just waved us towards the pool. So from mm -hmm. there, I just knew I was getting wet. I knew I was going inside that pool. My clothes were already starting to come off. In my head, I was already inside that pool. Um, you know, we walked over the bridge. We walked around the pool. And we were just left alone to do whatever we yeah. wanted to do. And it was so strange and bizarre. And I felt out of my element because it was the last thing I expected was going to happen. 
I wasn't prepared for the excitement that really just overwhelmed me while I was there. We made our way down the steps to what was Ad Rock's bedroom. Mm-hmm. And all I could think of Ad Rock in his bedroom, seeing MCA in the in the window of the pool, waking him up or getting his attention to come outside and hang out and do nothing. Like I, I just was like, oh my God, I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. It was like the holiest grail of of locations that I yeah. never thought I'd experience. <laughs> and that's when I said, I'm going in. And Mike said, I'm going in. And we, it, it, and I remember walking up there, you know, we were sitting on the edge of the pool and we looked at each other and didn't even say anything to each other. We read each other's minds. We were just like, this is crazy what we're about to do. And, and, and we just did it. We just went for it, man. We just started swimming down to that window. And we saw you guys on the other side with your cameras. And we were just like, oh my God, holy shit. You know, high five in and just like, living it up man it was like living a dream i couldn't believe it it was so dreamlike and surreal i agree i i it totally it still feels that way i i remember distinctly uh many times in those couple of days i thought is this really happening or am i dreaming because it, it didn't feel real and the the the, the way that we were allowed to do these things and and really understanding in the moment how rare an opportunity that was Again, it's such a random spot on a map, but here we are. We all were there for the same reason. And we were trying I was trying to think of like other Beastie Boys fans and what how much they would appreciate being in the same spot. So I was just trying to soak it all in and take up as many pictures as I could and kind of remember the looks on all of your faces. And when you guys came um um into the pool, just seeing that from the from the window was hilarious so we were all laughing and i was trying to record all of it and and take pictures of all of it and my one regret and i i think i'll always have this regret i don't think i have any regrets on that entire trip except for the fact i should have gotten in the pool (laughs) i totally should have gotten in the pool and i was i was way too pragmatic i'm like oh well i have a microphone on and i have you know I, i have my hat on and i have clothes that aren't gonna i'm like whatever you know you only live once and i really should have just done it um but i but seeing how happy you guys were and being able to see it through the window and and from that perspective was everything i mean it it was just unbelievable and then later on um it occurred to me and I, we, we talked about this on jim shearer's brouhaha podcast my Karen and i were able to uh, recount the same story so sorry if i'm being redundant and all but it's i still don't understand why there was water, clean water in that pool, because it was a construction mm-hmm. site. And and I, mm-hmm. I'm sure there's a logical reason if I really think about it. maybe the family who bought the house, brought their kids there one day and they wanted to have, I don't even care about that. It, it, it There wasn't a good reason other than it was prepared for us. It was prepared for us to be there because there was nothing in our way Again, we had an unlimited time and we didn't abuse it. We didn't try to go in the house or interrupt the construction workers. We were very respectful. But if there had been a foreman on that site or somebody with with a with a a hard hat and and, and a license or responsibility, they would have kicked us out so fast. They would have like, no, you can't come in here. Yeah, it was it was pretty incredible. I felt like the universe conspired to make that happen for us. I felt like just passion that we have for what we were doing all just just worked out in our favor like the stars aligned um none of the construction workers spoke english it's in hindsight it, it occurred to me that though they must have thought that we belonged there like maybe yeah. we were a part of the family that property i think that's um, right could you yeah. like you know just looking at your security camera or something seeing like strangers in your pool up in the hollywood hills like it's so weird how we would just pull that off like so yeah. flawlessly and <laughs> um and got experience that and get in that pool and you know we we looked on zillow and we realized that that water hadn't been in that pool until recently because it was empty on all the that's pictures right. on zillow that's right um well it was drained it was empty it was filled up with sparkling clean warm water for us yeah. the day we showed i, I just couldn't believe it i know pictures are the best pictures I've ever made during urban exploration. I mean, that's just, that's just incredible. I really wish you had 
gotten in the pool. I wish we could have created the three of us and recreated that photo perfectly. But you know what? It's perfect for what it is. And yeah, it's great it that is. we got to do what we got to do. I never thought it would get more exciting than being at G-Sun Studios. And then that happened, right? Like, I know. Oh, it's a, and and it, it seemed to happen in the right order. I think Mike said that on the brouhaha. He's like, <laughs> the order of it was perfect because if we had done grasshops first, maybe it wouldn't have worked. But we appreciated everything even more because of the way it happened and the order that it happened. I've, I've, I was so happy with how happy you all were. I was like, this is everybody's just like smiling from ear to ear, laughing. Uh, we're all like little kids. It was it was unbelievable. And we walked out of there. We left the place the way we found it. Nobody mm -hmm. said goodbye because they didn't care that we were there. And uh, and we <laughs> we just it, it was it was meant to be. And uh I, I can't and and just just to prove positive. We, I know a couple guys who went there. One, a, a friend of mine from um, from over here in in, uh, in uh, Pennsylvania went there. Uh, I think two weeks after he had a, a gig out there, and he's like, "I'm going okay. up there." And he drove up there, and it was locked up tight. Like he couldn't get yeah. in, and there was no way. There was all kind of signs like "no trespassing," um, probably <laughs> because of us. <laughs> And then, uh, and then another guy uh, who does who does exploration, he went up there and couldn't get in either. So I, I think I think it was just you know all of the cosmic tumblers clicked into place, and we ended up uh, being able it to was, uh, walk in there. It was meant to be, and you know, um, I mean, the adventures just continued after that. We we ended up on um, Hollywood Boulevard at the Palladium and uh, hoisted ourselves up to the marquee. I mean, I was like. I never thought I'd ever do that, right? But just just being held up and, and trying to grab that marquee, you know, where the photo of Adam Yow is, was incredible. And I got to tell you, man, there was nothing to grab onto. And I remember at one point when I was hanging on up there, I asked Rayan to let go of my foot so I could put it in the spot where, where Yauk's foot was. And my body weight just tore apart my fingernails because I was – I was just clinging on to nothing. Yeah. Um, and my <laughs> stayed numb for months. Wow. For months, they were just totally numb from doing that. But um, Yikes. I wouldn't That's trade crazy. anything, man. It was such an incredible experience. You know, I was the old man. I was the old man that day because I was taking the pictures. But I, I was sure either you or Mike was going to grab the neon, which would have snapped like a twig. Yeah. The neon was like right there. And you had to put your fingers in your hand behind the neon on the flashing to hold yourself up. I'm like, if they grab the neon, we are in trouble because it's going to break and we're yeah. going <laughs> to, we're going to have to pay for that. So at the very least, that was, that was fun. you know, and if it didn't feel thrilling like that, it, it wouldn't have been the adventure that it was. Um, yeah. Mike's tall, able to get right up there with these, but I struggled. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't recreate that photo, man, but just hanging there was enough for me. Um, and you know what's weird is we got so many great photos from, from this trip. Um, and it's tricky in California because, you know, you're shooting against the sun. So a lot of times you're shooting blind. It's like you, you figure something out and you know what you want. And you start snapping away, but you can't really see because of the glare. So you don't know what you're going to get until right. hindsight when you go put your picture in the frame, as I call it. Um and uh, I used to say, you know, this this isn't about photos. This is really just about the adventure. It's about the exploration and about being there. But since I've been to California, I've been I've been, you know, shooting around the sun so much that now I'm seeing things in the photo that I didn't see while I was there. And it makes them so much more special. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. That sounds great. Um, what, one of the things I wanted to back up on a little bit, I think it was the morning before before we met you at Griffith, I think it's the same day. So before uh, Grasshoffs, before Griffith, I think it was when we were driving around on Wonderland. It was before we met you. And for some reason, in my mind, I thought you and Michelle were with us. But at that point, uh, we were driving up to Wonderland Elementary School because there's a, a great Glenn Friedman picture of the Beastie Boys. When they, they, I guess they call it the Big Feet photo because their feet look really big because he used a fisheye and there's a slatted fence behind them they, the fence has since been removed and replaced with another fence so you can't really match it up all that well i think um uh a couple people jason chambers and rusty thibodeau uh were able to match it up 
a couple of years ago when they were there, but I think they've changed the fence. So we hung out at the at the elementary school, which sounds pretty shady. We hung out at the elementary school for a little while. And then we uh, realized that we were very <laughs> close to uh, where uh, Adam Yauch's cabin was. So we went to Wonderland where the murders took place, Wonderland Avenue. And, and we, we took the pictures of the apartment where John Holmes and the Wonderland uh, four on the floor murders were. We were there for, you know, maybe a minute. And then we realized, right, we're really close to Lookout Mountain Avenue, which is where um, Glenn uh, took pictures of Adam Yauch and uh, the Beastie Boys at Adam Yauch's cabin. And uh, we quickly found an address and we drove up there again. It's a really narrow street. And we found one house at the right address that was cabin like and all the other houses. They're not like a cabin at all. And we were we were, we were like, this is it. We found the cabin. Holy shit. You know, we're here. We're taking pictures over the fence. And we got the cameraman, Freddie, to put his camera over the fence and zoom in as much as he could. And I think Mike tried the, the doorbell or the buzzer. And nobody answered, but we really, we were kind of disappointed because we didn't get to go in. And so this is where I got really hyped up to talk to you again, because I guess it was what, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, um, you, you set your sights on that same spot. So what can you tell us about that? I went up there and uh, it's a great spot. You know, it's up in Laurel Canyon, which I love. And um, I thought it was going to be, you know, really easy place to get inside and when i got up there i realized i couldn't see the cabin from outside the fence was was too high for me and it was a wooden fence so you, i couldn't even see through i could barely you know see through see over it at all and um and i said to myself well you know i like uh, maybe i'll just try the doorbell and see what what happens and i rang the doorbell and, and the person answered and i told him who i was and and um what i knew about the house and he was really really nice uh and and he ended up making plans for me to come back to let me inside so I could go in and take some pictures and sit on the porch. And uh, it's probably the only cabin in all of Hollywood. It's there's something unique about this yeah. and they preserved it. Uh, it's changed a little bit, um, but it's been a long time. But for the most part, it's still there and it's still very much identifiable. Um and to be inside there, well, anyway, the guy called me back and said, yeah, come here. And he said, he said, the reason why he, he let me come in is because when he bought the property, he knew the history of the Beastie Boys and he knew someday fans would come knocking. He said, uh, you know, he's a little leery about strangers, but he heard the passion in my voice. And I flashed him through the ring doorbell, my Delta Bravo press patch. Nice. My ID. Once again. I'm sure. Can I with Can I ask adventure. you a question about that, Dan? Because um, so when you first went there, I was kind of living vicariously through you because I was I was okay. messaging okay. you. I was like, oh, here's the here's the Zoom, the Google or Street View uh, of the spot. Here's the address that I I think I know, and this is the pictures that we took when we were there. Um, so when you rang the doorbell, he wasn't home, right? Was he able to talk to you from somewhere else? Oh, yes. Yes, he was talking to me from somewhere else with his Ring doorbell app. That's really cool. And I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, we talked for a little while. Yeah, he he had video and audio of me, you know, out front. And uh, we talked for a little while, and he just sounded very kind and nice. I didn't, you know, it could have been any kind of person. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I just felt, you know, it doesn't hurt to knock or ring or whatever. And then he texted me back and said, yeah, let's make plans. I'll let you in. And uh, I planned on leaving L.A. the next day, but I decided to stick around because, because he said that I could meet him there on the property a few days later. So I stuck around just to go there and do that. And um, and I did. And I showed up there and he let me in. And uh, he was a younger guy, man, maybe in his late 20s. Really? <laughs> was, wow. Yeah, man. He was a young guy and he was excited to see me. And he's just like, yeah. You know, I, I knew about the history of this place. He's like, uh, he's like, I could, I could sense your passion during our discussion, and I didn't want to let you down. You know, and um, and and I walked in there, and and he's like, you can move around anything you want, you can do anything you want in here, and take your time. Like he was happy to have me, and I was happy to be there, and I was able to um, capture pictures that I haven't blended yet that I'm going to, and uh, it was a, it was an, it was an incredible bucket list spot for me because. I never 
thought about going there until you guys went there because I never thought anybody would be able to find it. I didn't know there was intel on on this. I knew the story of the place. I knew the history. And uh, to me, again, it was just as incredible as any of the other places that I explored with you when you were in town. Um, it was something really, really special. I mean, I'm still riding on that wave. Um, you know, it just, it, it, it made me high on life. It really did. It was really incredible to not only experience that, but to know that there's nice people out there that really are intrigued by what you do and interested. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, you know, when, when we travel and, and we go and we do this, we encounter people that have no idea what we're doing and wonder what the hell we're doing, taking pictures at we in weird places, maybe in weird parts of town. And then after you tell them what you're doing, the majority of everybody I talk to is, is, happy to know about it and they're happy to help and um yeah yeah they're happy really to help was, that's right that's right they're really happy to help so um yeah man like when you guys went there maybe that guy didn't get you know if, if the if if kearney did ring the doorbell maybe he didn't get to it in time or, or he wasn't by his phone but he would have answered and yeah. he would have let you go for the same reason because i know y'all share the same passion that i do um for what yeah we, what we are doing here so <laughs> did you, you get a chance it. to go in did you go inside did you get a chance to go in in the in the house or was that pushing it a little bit it wouldn't have been pushing it but i didn't really feel any i didn't really ask because i didn't yeah. have a reason to i yeah you know i didn't know anything about the inside of the house except for brief brief descriptions there mm -hmm. there was no photos that i'd seen that were inside the house that's how I felt at the grass house too um i felt like i could have we could have easily walked inside there and explored around inside there, but it just didn't, it just didn't really, it wasn't, it didn't seem necessary. You I know agree. What I mean? I was yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I'll, I I know exactly what you're saying. Um, yard, man, yeah, I, when, it was when you posted that picture, when you posted the picture of yourself sitting on the steps, I thought I was going to be all jealous and like, man, but I was so, I was, I felt triumphant. I was like, oh man, it, there he is. It happened. You did it. And that's what, like, that's exactly why I was like, oh, we got it. I want to hear this story. I didn't want to just see the picture. I wanted to hear the story because I know we had gone there and they, you know, sometimes one thing leads to another and, you know, uh, but you tied it up for us. It's like you, you went on our behalf. I, that's how I feel about it. It was awesome. I felt like we were did, you know, for that whole adventure was for the team as one. We were all on the same page. You know what I mean? It wasn't it wasn't us trying to outdo each other. It never is. It's us no. looking out for each other for each other. And when I left that day, I was like, yes, I did it for the team. I mean, that's how I felt, you know. Um, and that's I tried how to I explain that too. Most, yeah. Most of the, it's I, like I, I'm the same. Yeah. The thing is it isn't about me. Um I want to discover places that everybody else can enjoy too. You know what I mean? For sure. And I, I said the same thing to Jim Shearer on the brouhaha. He said, you know, I was really jealous. And I was like, you know, if someone had posted the pictures of the grasshopper pool, I probably would have been a little jealous too. But when I was there, I really felt like we were doing that on behalf of anybody who had found themselves in the same spot that we were, mm -hmm. we were doing it for the team, for anybody who had the opportunity. So I totally feel you. I, I think um, I, 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 I'm going to be thinking about this for a long time, all of these different spots, all these different hits. Um, that trip was, was amazing. It was wild for me. It was personal and it was successful because I didn't know what to expect. I'd never been there, but having you guys as guides and, sharing what you knew and sharing what, what you've, what you've hit before. Um, I, I just, I, I think I, if I had been alone or just with one other person, it would have been so different. So having you all there together and then seeing you tie it all up by going back to the, um, back to the uh, cabin was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. I was just looking at my list of questions to ask you. And I think we, we've, we've talked about most of the stuff, but one of the things I wrote on here was Cantor's Deli. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a that's a favorite moment of mine too. You know, we we uh, we ended one of the days together. We went to Canner's Deli as it was getting dark for dinner, and um, we sat in the Guns and Roses booth together. And uh, I'll I'll never forget that. That was incredible. And we had the the waitress took a picture of us. Um, and we were all posing just like Guns and Roses did, you know, thirty years before. 
um, well, probably almost 40 years before now. It was unreal. And uh, we were in the right booth with the right people. And uh, a lot of people are like, oh, a lot of people think it's the booth to the left. And this is the right one. It was it was just everything was perfect. I mean, somebody could have been sitting there, but they weren't. It was there for us to sit there. And uh, every little detail, everything we did, uh, it still kind of unfolds in my head uh, as I'm going to sleep at night or if, or as I'm uh, listening to a certain song, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I was in the room where they recorded this or I was I was in the spot where they they uh, took the album cover for this. And uh, yeah, it's not just about the Beastie Boys, but a lot of this was and a lot of this was about um, being with people who really appreciated the spots that we were hitting. It wasn't just, oh, this is pop culture. It was like, this is our collective history. And uh, and I'm like you said it at the top, you were saying how the Beastie Boys were sort of you, you, every album they've had has been your favorite album because of where you are when you're listening to it and what it reminds you of. And uh, that's how I feel about it. So seeing those pictures, the pictures to me uh, substantiate all of the music in a way, because you there's different eras from that group and there's different eras in our own lives that are that parallel that. So uh, it was it's I always say this and it's it's kind of corny, but I'll say it again. To me, it's like time travel. It's the closest we're going to come, at least for right now, because you feel like you're going back in time and you can you're standing there. I know you probably do this, too, and you can conjure them walking in the room you can you can conjure what it was like when they were having that photo shoot you can conjure what it was like when they were hanging out at the pool like you said ad rock looking through the window and ad, and and yauk is 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 making faces at him through the window i mean we that's it's it's so hard to put it into words but it is it's this intangible feeling that i get every time we tell these stories and every time we go on these trips it is awesome and i'm so glad we were there together um, so, yeah, me too. So aside from Beastie Boys and all the exploration and the cool spots that we did, like it was just incredible to bond with you, eh, to get to know you and get to spend time with you because you're an incredible human being. I love you, man, for who you are and what uh-huh, you do. That meant the world. Um, Ray Enns, my brother, I've explored with him before. And and again, just to, to, to do it again in, in a different city was absolutely marvelous. And to meet Mike Kearney and then to bond with him and uh, continue our relationship ever since then. He's just become th- this amazing person that I wish I'd known my whole life. Um, it was a pleasure meeting Nick. I'm a fan of his work. I'm a fan of your in search doc. Um, I mean, I, you know, I didn't, I haven't explored any of those run DMC locations, but I grew up, I live, I, I was into run DMC during those times. So to look back and see you, you know, revisit those like, locations i am living vicariously through you um not just run dmc but even through your pictures of of the greatest rap and hip hop hop um artists that are just icons and idols to me it is uh it's my way it's it's my way i just want to thank you for for me being able to channel the energy through what you are capturing and what you're capturing is like a then and now perspective of what it was like at a certain place in time um Thank you, man. You you and, and Ferrari, I've always said this, I'll say it again, are my MVPs. I love what you guys do and the inspiration that that you brought to me. And, and I want to thank Danny O'Connor, too, for creating this no this doubt. team, the community. Yeah, the community that we have in our group um, that has allowed me to do what I'm doing. And, and it's got me going. Um, I can't wait to, to explore more. That's I was just going to ask, like, what's next? But before I do, I mean. You, you bring up the in search of docs. I have a sneaking suspicion that everybody we just talked about is going to be in the in the Beastie Boys episode. Because <laughs> man, did we give uh, Nick some content? I mean, we the thing I forget a lot of the time is that all of the stories that we just told are on film. I mean, we recorded all of that for three days. We had Freddie, the cameraman. Uh, recording every little bit of what we did. So you guys jumping in the pool and being at the cabin and and being at G-Sun, all of it. I mean, he had a drone. There's going to be some ridiculous footage of us mugging for the camera at G-Sun on the, on the balcony and, uh, and and drone footage of, of them sort of pulling away of us all just holding the basketball and posing like we're in a video. It's going to, it's, it's going to be uh hilarious and i'm so glad that we that nick got uh, a camera a quality camera uh to follow us around 
uh, and, and document all of this. So I don't know how that's all going to come out. We're still releasing um, uh, some LL Cool J stuff. Uh, Nick's been really busy with other projects, but uh, I know that he loves this. This is sort of his um, his baby, really. And he's determined to keep releasing these films. And I just got really lucky kind of falling into this and being at the right place in the right time. And he's like, I'll follow you around. I'm like, okay. And so next thing you know, I'm on video, but this time I feel really good. I think everybody that was on that trip is going to be a part of these documentaries um, because how could you not be? You guys were walking the walk. You guys were there. Your enthusiasm is so authentic. It would be crazy not to include all of that. So I, I I don't know how it's going to manifest. I'm not sure if it's going to be a five minute doc where we release, you know, 10 chapters or if it's going to be, you know, uh, an hour long movie. It's really up to Nick, but um, don't look now, but you're going to be in it. <laughs> I think you're going to be a part of it. So it's going to be it's going to be amazing. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, so if I could switch it back to to Delta Bravo, I, I was really fortunate this year because I, I think I, I got all of my white whales. Um, I had help finding a white whale from uh, the wire that had that had uh, eluded me for a long time. I love that show and I live near Baltimore. So I, I'd done a lot of wire spots, but um, Aaron, who is uh, friends with Rand, had uh, she loves to be to sort of uh, seek out, even from far away, she does all the research and then she, she hands it over and says, I think this is it. And she found that for me. But then to go to uh, to go She's to uh, the bucket list spots. So it's like white whales and bucket lists. I mean, I don't have any more bucket list spots. I got to come up with new ones because I hit them all. Like I hit the Pacific Coast Highway, G-Sun, Grasshoffs. I mean, these are things that I could only dream about because I had never been out there. And now I've been there and I know the lay of the land a little bit. And I can't wait to go back. So I wanted to ask you, do you have um, any white whales that you haven't been able to get that you know you know exist or maybe you, maybe you haven't been able to find? Is there anything that Absolutely. eludes you? Absolutely, man. Hey, ladies video. So um, over at Culver City, there's a mansion on a hill. <laughs> and I've been there, but I, I haven't been inside yet. But yeah, my goal is to get to that pool and... Um, see what it's like up there you know where the beastie boys come out in their um in their 70s gear you know uh grasshops clothing hay. probably grasshops clothing yeah absolutely it yep it sure was uh so i want to get up there also i've been to um if you look in that video they pull up to like the oil feed fields where yeah. the oil pumps are right 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 so I, went up, I found the oil pump i just can't get on the other side of the fence but uh where's that I'm keep trying man can you give us a, it's a Culver city? City. It's also it's Culver, in Culver city. city. Yep. So uh, those are just a, a couple of things at the top of my list here in California. I have a long running list and folders full of uh, places all over. Um, I mean, it's just like a never ending kind of list. Every yeah. day I find more, and more stuff that I just stumble upon. But um, I'm looking forward to um, in two weeks. I'm heading up north with Greg Samsa. He's my exploration buddy. Yeah. And uh, we're going to and meet up with um joshua cooper up in napa valley and, oh um, nice that's awesome shout out yeah. to josh yeah that's awesome yeah he's great i love hanging with him i can't wait to see him again and we're gonna head up to the coast and uh hit one of my bucket bucket list spots from the goonies are you doing are you going to oregon or are you i'm pretty sure man that's where we're headed ah uh, that's amazing that's amazing is that i don't know much about it but it's is it possible to do Goonies and and Stand By Me? Is it the same kind of part of town? I don't know about that. Josh is my host. He said he's going to guide the way. And um, we're going to hit stuff from like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, um, yeah. Stephen King's Coop, and mm. The Goonies, man. Goonies is just, man, it's probably my favorite movie. I was lucky enough to see it um, in Hollywood Forever Cemetery this summer, which was incredible, oh, man. Wow. They light up the mausoleum. Yep, they, they they show it on a big, huge, massive wall, and um, it was pretty pretty special to watch it there and see people dressed up like Goonies characters all around you, and just watch it on the lawn outside. It was pretty special. Rand so took yeah, me, Rand took me through there. I went to the cemetery, and there's got some Madonna shots there. 
uh, the Herb Ritz uh, took of Madonna back in the day. Um, what a what a great place uh, that cemetery. I'm not a really big cemetery guy, but it's really a very tranquil, beautiful place. And apparently, it hadn't been for a long time. It was it was all overgrown for a long time, and somebody took better care of it. Um, man, that would be great, Greg and uh, and Josh Joshua going up to uh, going up the coast. Um, those are amazing people and they, they've done some amazing things. I'm really excited for you. Um, and, uh, you know, when you said Greg, uh, it reminded me of you. I, I know Greg is, uh, is always posting from the Cecil hotel. I believe he, he, uh, yeah. he lives there and, uh, he yeah. has this whole, he should do a TV show on like what he sees through his people because it's bananas, <laughs> but, um, but it's it, so it, it, it but it brings me back like you did the, the uh some amazing delta bravo shots from the elevator there right and you yeah. i think if i'm not mistaken you put a slap on the on the water the water container yeah. on the roof right yeah so the cecil hotel is different now um you, you can't get in there and uh they have tight security because it's it's changed quite a bit over the le last few years. Um, Greg's a resident, and he's only allowed to bring one person, one visitor in there at a time. Um, but we went in there, and we went up to uh, – we took the elevator up to the floor where Lisa Lamb was acting erratic in, in her viral video. You know, saw her door, and uh, we went <laughs> – to Richard Ramirez's uh, room where he resided um, during his killing spree, which mm. was vacant. So we, and it was unlocked. We just walked right in there and it was just crazy being inside there, walking, mm -hmm. walking up uh, through the back of the hotel where he would creep around at night and up the steps up to his room. And to, then to be able to go into his room was just, uh, it was out of this world. And then yeah. we went up, um, we said, we said, man, let's let's go up to the water tower. Like you're not supposed to go up there. We get up there, and there's a sign that says, you know, do not enter. Alarm will go off if you go through these doors. And man, me and Greg just busted right through the doors. We didn't care. No alarm went off. Right. <laughs> we went over to the water towers and uh, found the exact spot in the water tank where where she was found. Dude, I could not believe that experience. It was yeah. just, it was mind blowing. Yeah, I put a slap up there, yeah. and um, it could still be there. Yeah, that's uh, man, you know, like the true crime stuff, I, like I'm I'm like a lot of people, I'm sort of morbidly fascinated by it. It freaks me out a lot. I know Jimmy um, did the David Berkowitz uh, apartment and all of that area around there for Son of Sam. And man, it's it's just it's so creepy because I watched all the same documentaries and um, the, the haunting of the, the Cecil hotel one was so disturbing. And that whole story was really disturbing. And I, here I am, I'm just, I'm like, I really want to go see the Cecil hotel. Cause it's the backdrop for the, where the streets have no name video. That's like, that's my thing. I'm like, I, I just want to see where you two was on the roof of the liquor store. <laughs> and uh, we didn't, we actually didn't get to downtown LA at all. Oh, and that's the other thing that kills me that I really wanted to do. I had it all lined up. I had all the pictures. And then you did it. They live. You you killed They Live. I love that movie. I love that you did. I wanted to go to the alley with the where the fight was, where the where the sunglasses were in the box. And you did it all. It's just it's so that's cool, funny. man. Love it. <laughs> I love that movie, man. So, you know, I live um, on the outskirts of L.A., but I go in I go into L.A. once a week and I link up with Greg. And, um, you know, we we like the same stuff and we're not afraid to uh, venture into rough territory and sketchy areas. And uh, so, yeah, you know, I focus I've been just been focusing on movies that I like. Like I've always just explored things that I'm into, whether it's mm -hmm. popular or not. And I think my favorite stuff that I've done is probably the least most popular stuff there is. Mm. They Live, for example. I, I love that movie. It's incredible. Um, you know, it should be filed as a documentary because it's a sign of the yeah. times. Yeah, man. It, crazy. Job. We still have um, spots from They Live that we that Greg and I are going to hit um, together. But once a week, we usually, you know, have been picking a movie and that's what we'll roll with, whether it's, you know, colors, you know, or, or they live or falling down. Um, yeah. The falling down ones you did were amazing. The ones on Santa Monica pier, like it, you matched it up flawlessly that last, I guess it's uh is it Robert Duvall and, and Michael Douglas is at yeah. the end? Oh my gosh. It's yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, 
there at the end. I uh, my mom was in town for a week. It's been a busy last few weeks. I had a friend staying with me for a few days. Then I worked a few days in a row, and then I was in LA for a few days, worked a few days in a row, and then my mom stayed with me for a few days. So now I'm just kind of recharging and uh, resetting things. But so my mom was in town, and we got to recreate some photos. Like she, I is, saw that. Yeah, she's enjoying my hobby too, um, because it's fun. It takes us to places we wouldn't go otherwise, and. We're at Venice, and I was like, hey, you think we got the energy to walk all the way to that pier down there? And my mom was the, just took right off, man, you know, set off running. So it was a blast, man. It was It's it's really cool exploring. I guess I can say it's fun for the whole family. That's so and cool. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Something that has just become a part of, of my life and uh, will continue to be, man. And I wish more people would do it because – there's a, a world of wonders out there. Sometimes you just got to, you know, put your pants on, go outside and look around. You never know what you're going to see. You never know what you're going to find. And um, that's pretty much, pretty much it. Yeah. I, I'm, I think we are uh, of like mind. I, uh, everything you say, I, I completely agree with. I, I, I've, I have so much fun with it. And I think like you said, I wish more people would do it because when I get excited about it, I want to be able to talk to someone else about it. And if they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, or I, that's weird, or I'm not doing that. It's, it, it's, uh, I have to look around further for other people like yourself. Uh, so I can bounce ideas off of them or plan another trip. That's why Rayanne's been so great is he loves this hobby. If you, for lack of a better word, I almost don't want to call it a hobby. Cause I think it's kind of like a way of life in a way. It's just a way of sort of, experiencing new places you just kind of research and you go places and you find out what happened there and uh if you're fortunate you find some nugget of of, of history that you're like wow i i haven't i had no idea this happened here this is great um re real quick i i, I want to uh, do our, our sponsors because um i, I wanted to shout yeah. out um tom with fever at Main Street Jukebox uh, from Stroudsburg. I say it every time I guest host, I, I really want to get up to his shop. Me too. Stroudsburg. It's not It's not terribly far, far away, but I definitely have to make a plan to get up there. And I just, I keep seeing people come through there. Like, uh, I think uh, Keanu Reeves was there the other day. I saw Rock Kim came through there one day. And they all stop and take a picture with Tom. And it's just cool to know that he's a Delta Bravo guy. Oh. He did some really cool uh i think he did a bob marley shot in wilmington delaware of all places and it was bob marley playing soccer yes. on the street i'm like this is so cool yep. this is what it's all about right um and the other uh, yep. um, i wanted to congratulate uh one of our sponsors kevin bednars uh, who is the owner and operator of the ashburn pub the percival pub and percival eats in percival virginia um but he just had a show and I, I, Jimmy uh, went to the show uh, last weekend where he had painted, uh, I think, uh, a skateboard every day of the month of October. And he called the show Grind. And it was just beautiful how he promoted it and labeled everything. And he's just he's a great artist. And uh, he donated some of the proceeds to Still Brave Childhood Cancer Foundation. Uh, tattooed Tom Mitchell, who's been on this podcast with Jimmy. Um, and is, I guess, a friend of the podcast, a friend of Kevin Bednar's, and Kevin is giving back with his art. It's just, it's so cool to see how uh, this whole Delta Bravo thing has manifested itself, and it kind of inspires people to do other good things. So those guys are um, always sponsoring us and, and letting us do what we do, and I love being able to shout them out in more ways than one. Um, yeah, and then, Kevin, you yeah. Just, thank you. I'm sorry. I just I stepped on what you were saying. What were you saying? Oh, I just wanted to say thank you to Kevin for being an inspiration. He really is just doing a stellar job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I, I wanted to uh, I asked you about white whales and bucket list spots. And this is this is a tough question, because if someone asked me this, I would I would want to I would want to have thought about it for a couple of hours before. But um, do you have any favorite uh spots that you've ever done is there like a top two or three or five that that jump out when i'm when i ask the question favorite favorite delta bravo nothing, hits yeah to me nothing tops the grasshopper pool i mean that was just absolutely incredible i don't know if 
if I'll ever, you know, even get close to to that feeling of what what that was like. That's awesome. You know, that was just special. Um, there's a lot of them. I mean, there's so many of them, Andy. I just feel like I keep outdoing what I set up to do all the time. And you know what? I always think about, man, I would love to, if there was any way that we could ever put together a meeting of the minds and create some kind of gallery. Because, uh, you know, I've only printed out my pictures twice. I printed out a picture of the Beastie Boys, which uh, Rayan has. I blew it up on canvas and I could not believe how incredible it looked. And I just said, wow. If oh, I remember that. Gallery, of like all of our great work, it would just be stunning. It would be so stellar. It'd be a great experience and a great way to bring like-minded people together and, and just have a good time. Um, and then I recently printed out a picture that I did of Nick Cave at the at um at the Chateau Marmont. And again, I was just blown away at how it looks in contrast to looking at it on a phone or on a computer. Um, yeah. I really do believe that what we're making is art, and I would love to see it um displayed sometime man um so yeah my fingers crossed that like someday we can all come together and and put something together and meet up sometime some way somehow and i look forward to you coming back to la you and kearney i would love to do part two man it would be incredible to see you again and uh if not i will see you on the east coast because you know i get around i'm neither That's here right. nor there yeah you better and, let uh, us know if you're coming to new york or yeah. boston well we can, yeah. we can run up there pretty quick and, and meet you if it's for MCA day or just a day in, in Baltimore or New York or Boston, whatever. Um, I'm really looking forward just to linking back up with you guys and uh, keeping things rolling with y'all. Well, you know, I, I think you you're onto something with the, the gallery show idea. Um, last year, before I made my plan to go to Tulsa, I had a, a bigger idea that is still totally possible. And that would be to go to Tulsa as sort of a meeting point and then and have a weekend of delta bravo slash outsiders um events and i think danny uh is open to it i actually i know he is he said he would be and he even started painting this picture in my head of um having we could show the in search of documentaries uh at the circle cinema so imagine imagine Delta Bravo being on the marquee of the Circle Cinema. Talk about full circle. I mean, no pun intended, but and then the idea was to bring um, printed images and have a gallery show of our our favorite hits. Everybody who wanted to come, we could maybe agree on a size and we could get some standard size frames and just have a gallery show whether it's in the lobby of the Circle Cinema or another location in Tulsa, and just have a weekend, like a summit. I think Jimmy Ferrari has used that word before, like a summit. But um, to go and just be around people who love this this uh, exploration thing that Danny has, has uh, inspired. Um, but there's so many things we could do with that. I mean, he was talking about getting S.E. Hinton to come out and, and talk or to be invited to the thing. Uh, to maybe show the outsiders or to um, we could organize um, tours around Tulsa where we we go hit spots together or maybe we bring our our hard copy pictures of the spots we've hit in Tulsa or elsewhere. I, I think we should absolutely do that. There's no reason not to. And there's enough people that love this uh, and it's so easy to print things. It's just a matter of getting everybody there. So uh, Tulsa or anywhere else, we could have a basically a party and, and a gallery show and um, pick a city where we want to run around and, and hit spots. So count me in. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Yeah, I think that we can discuss um, a long term plan of coming up with like a tour bus on Hollywood Boulevard, where maybe we take tourists to recreate photos as the Delta Bravo tour bus. Like, I think that would be pretty wild, man. Yeah, I, yeah, that would be. <laughs> that's a great idea. And I think you know, it's it, back in the day, it was uh, it was like uh, what was it, Star Maps? Uh, Amer Amanda Wurlitzer and the Bad News Bears selling her Star Maps. Um, well, why yep. not? You know, if, if the technology Absolutely. is so much better now, we know exactly what things look like and exactly where they are. I mean, I don't know how you collect, but uh, collect your map. But I have a Google Map, and it's just filled with all of the places I've been and all the places I want to go. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's all doable and it's all fun and uh, I want to be a part of it. So that's a great idea. Let's let's make it happen somehow. Yep. 
Absolutely, man. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you again, brother. Thanks for having me here. Uh, I love chopping it up with you, and uh, we'll do it again. All right, Danny. Well, I'm going to let you go, but thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, I'll try to get this uh, wrapped up and and uh, and posted soon. We have a, an episode that should they'll hopefully have dropped by the time anybody hears this one. Um, we were trying to rekindle the podcast because the last one we did was with Fred Novoselsky back in May. And um, I just interviewed um, Alan Perry again uh, because we got Mr. Freeze from Rocksteady Crew and uh, mm -hmm. we got to talk about Flashdance and Pittsburgh a little bit. So I'm hoping that'll come That's out. Um, well, hopefully it'll be out by the time anybody hears this. So uh, we're we're uh, trying to get this back up and running and and uh, we're going to. We're going to keep on uh, keeping it on and, and finding new spots and new people to talk about the spots. So, Danny, thanks so much for, uh, for for talking with me tonight. It is really inspiring. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Shout out to uh, shout out to Andy and Monty and Tulsa and uh, shout out to all the Delta Bravo OGs. Delta Bravo does it better. No doubt. Thanks, Danny.